If you played role-playing games for a long period of time, most likely you've been in Forgotten Realms, you've been in Dragonlance or Kren, uh, or you've been in the world of Eberron. Uh, a lot of um, uh, good role-playing systems have their own world, or even use Earth as a setting. But I want to talk about this Zayate. Am I pronouncing yes, that right? that's correct. All right, a really cool... Um, a unique world, um, which I think will will uh, excite a lot of game masters. Um, so, tell us about this world. What is yes. the, the backstory behind it? So, Zayathe is called the Weirded World. And it is called the Weirded World because some 1,200 years ago, the high magics, which were used by the Athernic civilization to manipulate just about everything, make mountains move, make cities fly make rivers change their courses, whatever it happened to be, they used the high magics for this. And when Galcianthros tried to break into the chaos gate, if you will, to free himself from his earthly body to become a god, he broke the Zianthus, which is magic, which creates all things. And when that happened, he also opened up the door to the Lords of Corruption, which enabled them to taint the Zianthus. And that taint now seeps into everything in the world of Zayathe. And it is why monsters exist. And it is why strange, weird, terrible abominations stock the depths. And it is why there are so many terrible and wonderful things to explore in the weirded world. How to do? Great. <laughs> ah, marvelous. <laughs> so uh, we'll start with the Encyclopedia Volume 1 yes. first. So this has everything you, you almost, I think you have everything you need. Because yes. this is based on the 5e system. It is, correct. And this has uh, the origin of the world, the gods, and tons of um, races. Yes, can, new races. Pick from. Um, there's no classes, though. We have, con we have classes on our website, two new classes on our website, but we will be bringing more out as we... It's already 250 pages. I was running out of room. <laughs> <laughs> it also, of course, has the world map and all of the continents described. It's got a little bit about the magic of Zionthu, of, of Zayathe, because the Zionthu, as you know, we talked about this, when it collapsed, when it was tainted and, and the calamity occurred, these things called flowstones were created, which are basically mineral magic, if you will. And they okay. have their own lore and their own things that go on around them. But it is it has much uh, much depth, much interest, and I think quite a bit of intriguing ideas that others could even bring to their own homebrew worlds if they wanted to, if they didn't want to just run you know, Zayathe as it is. Yeah. Now, Gooey Cube does a tremendous, tremendous job with the art. Thank you. Uh, just all you gotta do is look through this book, and you can see some of the amazing things they put together. I mean, I'm looking at the city with the waterfall. Yes, it's Darkenhaven. In the, in the cave there, you see the cave, yes? yes? That goes into the Gloom Port. Yes, the Dune Harbor, which is underneath the city of Darkenhaven. Yes, and there is an enormous cavern there where many, many ships may sail into and sail out of. Yes, it is a fascinating place, the yeah. Gloom Port. This has stats for all the races. They... Yes. Now, tell us Talk to us about the races. What have you included that's so, outside of the norm for D and D? So, at my table for many years, we we played races a little differently. Anyway, uh, uh, I I think they they need to be more inclusive generally than they've been in in speaking just speaking just as Kim, you know, mm -hmm. rather than Alphineas. You know, I you know what I believe. I, mm -hmm. uh, my old kid's a black kid, and and there's lots of different people who are, you know, not of necessarily my skin color. And a lot of times I felt like when I was looking at a lot of materials, all dwarves were were little fat white people and all hobbits were were little big footed white people and all elves were were, you know, hmm. little sort of pointy eared white people. And, <laughs> and um, you know, for, for my son and for others who were not of, of the Caucasian race, sometimes that didn't feel so inclusive, right? You know what I'm saying? It didn't feel right to me. So we have... Uh, in here, we have six new races. We actually have a number of new races that'll come out in future encyclopedia, but we have six new races in here. And um, they all have inspiration that, that sort of comes from other peoples of the world, along with having four races that sort of encompass 
the races of our world so that we are we have a more inclusive thing that's going on so the sarth who can't do magic by the way yes the sarth i will go back to being alphinius right now the sarth cannot do magic but they are the only ones who can cut the flow stones to enable the magic to be tapped therein they are orange skinned and influenced by perhaps a little bit of Africa and a little bit of South America, right? A little bit of North American Indian. They have this marvelous thing about them, yes? Mm -hmm. that, you know, so the indigenous peoples have a little bit of representation within those, those folks, which is, which is marvelous, yes? Mm -hmm. And then there are the Thea, yes? The, the people of the winds, yes? Who come from Astrinia. And they are more inspired by Eastern Asian folk. They have, they have a marvelous look to them and, and they feel more like those people rather than people from Europe, for example, yes? Mm -hmm. And then there are the Maroon, which are blue-skinned, dwarven-like people who are not really inspired by anything except for walruses, but that's a different thing. But we have tried to bring this, this kind of idea together and make it a, a, a more familial, world-familial, right? Human, Humanity-familial thing. So it sounds like it's a, it's a mix of uh, real-life cultures and, and fantasy. Yes, just like any, just like fantasy and European fantasy is, yes? Mm -hmm. So we've tried to bring some of these other cultural concepts without, you know, just making them that culture. We tried the same thing with European fantasy was not really Europe, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's like all of these things, they're mixtures, this wonderful stew, if you will, of these ideas. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us about some of the dark things about this world. What can players expect to see or fight against? Yes. So one thing that always bothered me was where did monsters come from? Were they always created? Have they always been? In some places, some worlds, give explanations for these things. But in Diathe, I know exactly where they have come from. Because the corrupted high magics that seep into every blade of grass, they seep into every stone and drop of water. Those corrupted magics twist and warp things in Diathe. Not just stones and grass, but also individual creatures and beasts, and this is where monsters come from in Zayathe, yes. And there are terrifying ones. There's a little bit of horror in Zayathe, not just medieval fantasy. It is uh, a little scary, yes. And there, there are effects on the humanoid races as well, what we call the blood touch, yes. And in fact, if you have the blood touch, you are not welcome in towns and villages, for you are an anathema, you are an abomination. Yes, hmm. this is the truth of the blood touch. But that also, as you and I talked about, I'll be giving it, that, we <laughs> are, that, also, <laughs> that also gave us room so that people who wanted to create a unique character, they wanted to be a cat lizard human, hmm. right? Or a cat lizard elf, right? Hmm. We all know that to do that in most worlds, you gotta create a race. Yeah. Not in Zyothe, my friend. Yes, you can create your cat lizard human, and it could be a blood touch. Mm. And so you don't have to go through the rigmarole of creating a whole race. You can if you want to, but if you prefer not, now you have breadth and variety to allow your characters to be what or your players to play characters, whatever they want. That was the idea behind it. Out of curiosity, now Lord of the Rings has Sauron and, and, and Dragonlance Kryn has uh, to kiss us. Yes. Is there a, a big bad? There this? are multiple big bads. Okay. So the four lords of corruption who were created in the beginning when Alboa created all things, and ultimately, maybe I shouldn't say, but ultimately they were the destroyers of the creator. Hmm. They exist in the never place, trapped there. But when Galcianthros cast the horrible spell that he cast, yes. Cracks formed in the Never Place prison, yes. <laughs> and Anacria, the Havoc dealer, now knows that it is only a matter of time. Mm. There are evil gods, there are neutral gods, there are good gods, there are nefarious powers, there are strange creations. So the Thule, yes, these are also creations of the Lords of Corruption, and they have their own secret agendas. And the gods have created strange races, some of them not so kind and considerate as others, which will be revealed in future cyclopedias. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a marvelous world, my friend. Now, I know it, it, every, there's at least, I'm gonna show the map to our viewers. Um, so there's like four continents? There are four main continents, but there are actually the two poles, 
plus the arachnoid continent at the far top up there, which you see is Nodruka, mm. the four main continents, then of course Crooks, which was where the Ethernic civilization thrived for the most part, even though they were on every continent. And of course now it is a destroyed wasteland of terrible, fearful things. Mm. And then lastly, Mysterious Zin. Mm. Now, you mentioned something earlier that we talked about before we started filming, about this place. Yes, this is Vedestia. Yeah, can you tell me about what's going on here? So Vedestia is the the first continent that we are exploring. It It is more a European inspired, if you will. And we did that because we wanted to allow people, and if they want, if they're playing what is a more traditional campaign right now, yes, in, in one of those worlds, they're typically in that kind of a world. But we wanted to expand far beyond that. But right now, Verdestia, we have created the first of our major maps. So as you know, I have a three by two foot map that goes very, very deep into details uh, of each one of those localities, which enables folks to be able to truly see what could be going on in that continent. Interesting. And you mentioned that over here that the orcs have taken over these lands. Yes, so Nordruka, which is the far northern continent here, is where the Arachnoids and the giant, uh, giant kind, the Gargantua, they were sequestered there during the times of the Etherns. But they have now been freed, they have been set loose. Yes, and they have, they have come across the ocean and they have totally destroyed the kingdom of Kalanta, yes. And there all of those people have either been enslaved or destroyed. And they have even made war upon the Republic, which is south of them. But now they must cross the vile desolation to do so. Yes. Excellent. Would you say that, <laughs> as well as giving a lot of great uh, backstory information, uh, that there's potential uh, adventures? Oh, yes. There's, there's so much room for... For, for marvelous extensions. And the fact is, as you and I were, were speaking of earlier, Emmanuel, Sundestia is, is its own marvelous place with incredible, interesting things that are happening there, not the least of which is the Dun Sara Sea, where the, Com uh, the Komari tribes sail their sand ships across the murk crystal waves, yes, and they mine flowstones in their secret oases. Yes, and Estrenia, and Zustrenia, and all these places bring so much room and lore for adventure. So yes, yes, mm -hmm. unequivocally yes, my friend. It's, when, is, when is this available? It is available now. Ah, yes. at gooeycube.com? At gooeycube.com, yes. Well, so, what's the, um, the range of price for So this? it depends on whether you want the individual it by itself, or whether you want it with a map and, and the digital oh, version and all that stuff. But... Typically, you're going to pay $30, $35. You'll be able to get the map. You'll be able to get the book. And, uh, and it's 250 pages, which is, and it's, as you've seen, it's very high quality. The paper is very high quality. We have spared no expense to make it beautiful and marvelous for you. Mm -hmm. And the art is beautiful. And before we wrap up, though, let's talk about the Player's yes. Guidebook. So we created the Player's Guidebook because I know that some game masters would prefer not to share necessarily all the secrets that are in here. Though most of this is fine for players. It is. But there are certain things that some game masters might prefer not. So we produced a, a slimmed down, if you will. Now it's totally rewritten. It's not the same. But it's a slimmed down version of this that does not contain so many secrets and is also not so expensive. Mm. So for, I believe, $12.50, you can purchase the Player's Guide. Um, and we even have a bundle where you can buy five for your table for fifty dollars. Oh, that's and, excellent! Yes, so the GMs, which we know as GMs, we're always spending all this money on our players all the time. Well, at least we're not, you know, having to spend hundreds of dollars to equip our players with information about Zayathe. Hmm. Excellent. Again, you can find us at gooeycube.com. Uh, I haven't read this yet, but I've started reading this. And it's fantastic. I love the world building behind it. I love how uh, the gods play in it. Uh, I love the um, the bunch of races that you can be and how even the classic ones like the elves, mm -hmm. the dwarves have been adjusted for this world. Yes. Um, this is exciting stuff. I um, can't wait to play this. Um, but yes, stay tuned. We're going to have another video where, uh, where a friend of mine will pick this book apart. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. You have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>